Please go ahead and open up your Bibles. We are going to start in Philippians 4. Yeah, but we're not going to stay there very long. So I have a question for us before we start to read the Word of God. I want you to be thinking about it. How many of you this week have had a peaceful moment? Not just a peaceful moment, but a a peaceful moment where you were able to just give yourself to the Lord in in that time. Okay. Excellent. We're going we're gonna to talk about that here in a second. But first, let's read out of Philippians 4. We've been talking about not being anxious. And in our world, there's a lot of people that are overwhelmed with anxiety and worry, confusion, fear, doubt, all those things that try to plague us and try to mislead us. And so for those of of us that were able to take some time and just relax in the Lord and be with him, that is standing in the face against the culture. And I encourage us today, this is a day, our day of Sabbath, where the Lord has asked us to take some time and reflect and and be reviewing and, and be submitting to him. That's really what this day is, is about as we uh, are given it by the Lord to, to slow down and to look to him. And so let's read in Philippians 4, starting in verse 8, about overcoming the anxieties and allowing the Lord to work in our minds. Paul says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, Whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me. These do, and the God of peace will be with you. We're going to break that down. We're going to to chew on it a little bit. We're going to meditate on these verses this morning just a little bit. But I want to understand a little bit more about that question that I asked. So in those moments, for those of you that said, yeah, I took time this week. I was able to, to be just peaceful and be before the Lord. What did that look like? Just go ahead. Somebody speak kind of loudly so that we can hear you. But what did that look like? What did you do? What did you not do? Okay, mowing the grass. Okay. Who else? Isaiah? Good. Thank you. Anyone else?
good. Thank you. Anybody else? Karen? Well, if I would have given a title to today's message, it would be Meditate so that He can activate. Because ultimately, that is what the Lord does when we abide in Him. He meets us in that place. And when we meditate on Him, sometimes as, as Christians we go, ooh, meditate, I don't know about that word. It seems mystical or, or Eastern or something of that nature, like we're doing yoga or something, and ultimately it isn't. The Lord tells us to meditate on his character, meditate on his presence, on his being, who he is, and then he activates those things in us. I don't know about you, but when I'm spending time just kind of soaking in the Lord, just being with him, he helps to change me. He gives me sometimes different direction, or he makes clear the direction that he's taking me and, and going. So this morning, we want to focus in on meditating on the Lord, meditating on these things that he gives us through Paul to meditate on. Like I said, our culture and our, our society spins so quickly. How many of you have noticed over the years that time is, just goes so fast? Anyone? I don't think it's just because we're getting old. At first, I thought that's what it was. I thought because you know, we're getting older that, that life is speeding up and responsibilities make it feel that way. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that time has changed and that we're going faster but I believe that the, the culture around us and the society around us has, has, I hate to say, well, I won't say that. They have increased the rate at which they want to go. And as the church, we have somewhat linked arms with them and said, we'll go that fast too. But the Lord wants us to meditate, to slow down. So how do we do that? while at times still going pretty quickly along. You see, it's not that we have to stop necessarily completely. However, I believe that if the Lord calls you to do that, to sit and be quiet and listen, then we have to do that. But in the midst of going through our days, how do we meditate on the Lord? How do we allow him to process our minds and our understanding so that in the momentary actions of life, we're able to be used by him. That is what, what I believe Paul is encouraging. That we not grow anxious in the things of our life, but that we give it over to him so that we can be activated into his will, into his way. So let's look at a few of these things. We know that, that we have a struggle in the flesh. We know that the enemy of our soul wants us to focus on the opposite things than what the Lord would have us focus on. It is very, very encouraging, though, to know that we can look to the Lord and he will turn us from the things that the enemy wants to disable us with. Proverbs 23, verse 7, talking about a miser, someone that, that offers bread, but in his heart doesn't really want to give it. And it says this, for as he thinks in his heart, so he is. You know, as we focus on things and as we allow them to become the point of our fixation, the the focus of our life or of our thoughts, our hearts help us to go after those things. The struggle that we're in right now is to not allow 
the outside world to influence who we are, but to be influencers for Christ. And so when Paul encourages us to think on these things, to think on what is true, truth, that is so important to the Lord. In fact, it's, it's his nature, it's his character to be true. He cannot substitute that into who we are. The father of lies obviously being the enemy. So where Paul tells us to focus in on truth, we have the father of lies trying to implement a different understanding even of what truth is. I don't want to focus too much on on that one point because there are so many other aspects that that Paul is encouraging us to focus in on the Lord. But this is a big one because truth, as we understand it, is trying to be eroded in our society to the point that if we don't stand up for truth, if we don't stand up for the word of God, those around us will fall, they will die, they will suffer because they won't know what the truth is. We are in a battle. We have to choose to meditate on the Lord. We have to choose to abide in him, to give him our time and our thoughts, our hearts and our life. So let's look a little further down the line here. Whatever is noble. When we think about nobility, I hope that your mind goes to Jesus, the King. I hope that our minds go to the understanding that Jesus is the King of our lives. He holds true righteousness. And yet, the world is full of things that are unrighteous. The thought that you can be the king of your own life, that you can build your own kingdom, that you can establish things so that whatever you want goes. See, we need to dash these things as they come into our minds. Focus on what is just, on the justice of the Lord. We as people can do a pretty good job of looking at the other side of this one, can't we? prejudices, discrimination. I hate to say it, but we live as country people sometimes in those prejudices and in those discriminations. But God says, no, no. Meditate on what I say is just, true justice. Think on what is pure. We don't have to go very far before we can see and hear and understand things that are tainted, contaminated, things that are dirty. But yet, Paul encourages, think on what is pure. Think on what is lovely. God is love. He is full of love for us. And yet, there are many times where hatred starts to brew, bitterness entangles. Our minds can go places pretty quickly, and yet the Lord says, lovely, through Paul. He says, think of what is of good report. Hmm. Next week, I believe that the message is going to be on bringing a good report. I'm not sure yet. I'm still trying to work through that with the Lord. But good report. Obviously, there are false reports all the time. We're in an election year, right? There are things being said that are completely false, and yet we have to battle through. 
things that are condemning, things that are defensive. Think about this for a moment. The last time that you and a family member got into a discussion or an argument or a fight, did you come back with a defensive measure? Did you come back with something that said, I'm right? You see, this is part of what Paul wants us to take a moment and stop and consider what is the good report about my wife? What is the good report about my son or daughter or my husband or my sister, brother, aunt, uncle? Paul says to think on what is virtuous, what is moral, what's upright. The world would come and the enemy comes with much evil to try to fill our thoughts. Think on what is praiseworthy, admirable, commendable. Man, the enemy would love for us to fall into gossip, to words that tear down and don't build up. And so as we look at this list and as we understand that there is good, there is evil, there is a right way, there is a wrong way, there is black and white in this. The world would love to, for us to turn to whatever shades of gray that could be established in our thinking. But the Lord says, no, these things... These things that are true, noble, just, pure, lovely, good report, virtuous, praiseworthy. Think on these things. Meditate on them. Don't just give them a passing moment in your mind, but truly grab hold of what the Lord is saying, what he's doing, and meditate. Give it time. Allow him to work it into our minds, into our hearts. Our flesh can be tainted, but it can also be trained. I just recently heard a little blurb on the radio that, that spoke about habits. Habits can be a bad thing. Habits can be a great thing. It's what habits we allow to come and to stay in our lives. And to break a habit... We need to bring the Lord's habit into that place. Just like casting out evil and filling it with the Holy Spirit, that void. Our flesh can be trained. How do we train? It's by giving focus to the Lord's will. By considering his ways, seeking him, and then relating to the word of God as if it was and is and forever will be truth, inerrant truth. You see, so much of, of the training that we sometimes go through, and it's bad training, it's wrong training, but it's training that says, hmm, I've heard God's word used in this way and in that way, and I'm not so sure that this applies to me anymore. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that thought. I rebuke the enemy's tactic to say, there's nothing about this in the Bible. You're not going to find help in the word of God here. No, we, we will find help in the Lord. The enemy needs to be beaten back. How do we do that? Where does the attack often start for you? Cutting grass is your, your sanctuary, your time of, of peace. Cutting grass for me is a battle zone. It is. I'm very serious. When I get on my mower, I love cutting the grass. It's not that I'm hating every moment of it. I enjoy it. But it's a battle that I've learned to engage in when I get on the mower. When I was a kid, I'll be honest with you, I'd get on the mower and I'd be cutting and singing and all of a sudden I'm in a story in my mind that's going way out of reality and at times not into good places. Now I've learned when I get on the mower, 
I have to start engaging with the Lord. I have to meditate on who he is. Talk to him, pray, sing, be encouraged by who he is. I have to train in the Lord every time because it can still happen that I go back to those old things if I'm not focusing and asking the Lord to fill my mind. So we have to beat back the enemy. This is, this is not a playful idea here. I'm not playing around. When I say we have to beat him back, we literally have to use God's word. We have to use the sword of the spirit. We have to use what the Lord has given us to battle back. Our minds are a war zone. The enemy knows that, and he tries to sling those thoughts in. We need to place our thoughts, our actions, our heart motive into submission with God. And that is only possible through Jesus Christ. That is only possible through the Holy Spirit leading, directing, guiding, and giving what we need in those moments. We're going to go over three different passages here. I believe they're going to be up on the overhead, but turn, if you will, if you have your Bibles, turn to Romans chapter 12. Very familiar, yet don't take this as I already know that. Let's listen and be directed as we read these verses. Romans 12, 1 through 3. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say to you, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. You see, a renewed mind leads to a renewed life in Christ. That's what this is saying to us. That through the renewing of our minds, we will be able to understand what is the good, perfect, and pleasing will of God. We're not told then to just be established in that and know it, but to be activated in it. Meditate to activate. That we can walk out what is the perfect will of God. And he establishes it in us. Makes us able, makes us ready through the grace given to me. And he adds to our faith as we go obediently through those things of life. This morning, as we meditate, remember that it is not so that we can become high esteemed in our minds, overly, you know, just overwhelmed with the knowledge. We are given understanding. We are given the ability to know God's will so that we can walk in his will, talk about his will, express who Jesus Christ is in us. Let's flip over to Colossians. Colossians chapter 3. As I read this, it's a, it's a longer passage, but as I read this, listen for what the Holy Spirit is teaching in this. Listen for what he's saying to you. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on the things of the earth. Anybody there right now? Thinking about where you're going to eat afterwards, what you have to do today? 
set your mind on things above. We'll keep going. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Thank you, Lord. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth. This is a list of the things that are very black. Things that the Lord does not want us to participate, whether in thought or in deed. Listen carefully to this list. Fornication, uncleanliness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which we ourselves once walked when we lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you've put off the old man with his deeds. And you have put on the new man who is renewed Again, renewed, our minds renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. You see, not only our minds, but our hearts transformed, renewed, made right. Verse 12, Therefore, as the elect of God, how many of you are holy and beloved? Raise your hand. Do you know Jesus? You are the elect of God, holy and beloved. Put on, listen to that, holy and beloved, the elect, you that have received the grace of God through salvation by faith in Jesus Christ alone? This is what we're supposed to put on. This is the side of the list that God is saying, yes, 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 meditate here. Meditate on me. Do what I have done. Do what I call you to do. Be the ones that can bring the light through me. Listen to this. Put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. Man, these are powerful attributes of who God is and who he declares that he wants us to be. Verse 14, but above all these things, again, listen to these words. We're to put those things on, but above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. need to be meditating on what this means asking the Lord to show us in a deeper way how to walk these things out how to love first of all him truly with our whole heart and then be led in love to go for others to share that verse 15 and let the peace of God Rule in your hearts. And that brings us right back to what Paul is saying in Philippians 4. He's repeating again what the Lord is showing him. If you put on these things, if you meditate in the Lord, if you take on these attributes and the nature and the character of God, peace will be there. You will be wrapped in peace. Why? 
not because you're doing all this list, not because you're a good worker, not because you've accomplished so much, but because the arms of Christ, is ra- they're wrapped around us. His love, his mercy is there to care and to teach and to share with us how to go about these things, renewing our minds, reintroducing these things to our heart so that it can be a constantly shaped and formed in him. And let the peace of God rule in our hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Church, this next verse is pivotal in this. And let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Just, we could take years and meditate on that. This is the call for us. As the elect, the holy, the set apart, the ones who are called children of the living God. Let the peace of God come. And let us take the word of Christ and let, it, let him dwell in us. So that we can then impart to those that we encounter who he is and what he's doing and how he can do that in them. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. And whatever we do, whatever you do in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Again, church, meditate so that he can activate That's the purpose. That's the plan that we soak in him, in our relationship. We spend time with him. We love him. We desire him. And in that, he sows deep into us. Not only our minds, but our hearts. Let's go over to 1 Peter. Chapter 1, look at verse 13. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts, as in your ignorance, But as he who has called you is holy, you also be be holy in your conduct. Because it's written, be holy, for I am holy. Back in the day when they would wear long robes, they would also have belts. So when the time came that they needed to get somewhere and go... They could gird up that that robe and they would tuck it up in their belt so it wouldn't get in the way. The Lord wants us to be ready to go where he is pointing, to go where he says go. Our minds have to be renewed. Our hearts have to have the peace of Christ where he is indwelling and, and giving us what we need so that, like that robe, We are ready to go, to do, to be, to deliver, and to expose the love of God. I know we're going through a lot of scripture this morning. Nobody wants to say woohoo or anything like that. But here's the thing. The word of God will ignite a fire in us. I'm serious. If we're in his word, what does it say? It's alive and active, sharper than a double-edged sword. Now, that doesn't have anything to do with a fire, but I'm telling you, he will ignite in us passion that he has 
the good passion that he has. 1 Corinthians 2, 16. I could go through the whole 16 verses that lead up to this verse, okay? But here's what I'm going to do. Just break it down just a little bit here. Verse 16, 1 Corinthians 2, 16 says, For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? That's a question. Who? Who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. If you go back, and if you want to, you can track with me. I'm going to go really fast here. But in verse 5 and 6, it talks about two worlds. It talks about two understandings. The mind of Christ and the wisdom of man. We need to be living in the mind of Christ. We need to be understanding the wisdom of man. Not so that we can walk in it, but so that we understand the sharp contrast. Verse 7. The mind of Christ that we are told we are given involves wisdom from God. At one point, it was hidden, but no longer. We have that wisdom from God. Do we believe that? This is a big point. We have to believe it. Maybe we're just quiet this morning. But for, for all seriousness sake, believing that we have the wisdom that is from God, the mind of Christ, is pivotal as we go forward and as we are right now. All right, verse 10 through 12. The mind of Christ is given to believers through the spirit of God. Have you received this week wisdom from the spirit of God? Amen. It's given to us as believers in Jesus. The wisdom that we need. Verse 14. The mind of Christ is can't be understood by us without the Spirit. We need the understanding, the guidance, the direction that the Holy Spirit brings so that we can understand the, what, what the Lord gives, the mind of Christ. Verse 15, the mind of Christ gives believers discernment in spiritual matters. You see, we have ability that goes beyond natural. Straight to the point, no confusion there. But we have to believe. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to direct and guide and bring the discernment so that we can have the mind of Christ. This brings us right back to where we started. Don't be anxious. Don't be overwhelmed. So this is not going the way that we had hoped. It's not going the way that we had planned. This is not a time to unravel. This is not a time to run for the hills screaming like little children saying, what are we going to do? This is not that time this is the time that we have been put here for. Each of us, sovereignly born in this time, placed in a family, trained up. Maybe it wasn't good training, but you were trained up. And now, because of your belief in Jesus Christ, because of the renewing of our minds and the peace of God in our hearts, we have been prepared for a time as this. Church, we are in a point in our society and in our individual lives where it's time to step up. It's time to not falter and fall back 
on the old ways of thinking. The old man is gone. We are new creations. Now listen, does that mean that it's all going to be easy and the enemy is not going to try to bring back those old traditions, old ways, our own thinking, reasoning? Those will come. But that's where we say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. Holy Spirit, fill my mind. Capture that thought. Make it obedient, Lord. Give me something that I can walk in your ways. Church, we are in a battle. We are in a time frame where we are needed. Because Jesus is needed. And we have the revelation because we believe. Today is the day. Meditate on him. Meditate on him. Spend time while you're cutting the grass, while you're at work, while you're shopping. You know what's really cool is that even while we're sleeping, God can work in us. Meditate, though, so that he can activate. And meditate because he loves us and he wants to spend time with us. <laughs> That's just beautiful. It's amazing. Stand up and let's, let's ask for the Lord to reveal what he needs to reveal to each of us. I don't, I don't doubt that something that was said today connected, but I want the Lord to show each of us what he wants to do, what he wants to renew in our minds, what he wants to do with his peace in our hearts, and how he wants us to go forward in him in that way. Lord Jesus, today we come before you. And I don't know, we all came in from having different weeks. We, we came, uh, Lord, with all kinds of different agendas for this day and for the week ahead. But Lord, help us to take a step back from what we think. And to step into a place, Lord, where we are dependent solely on you. Father, we ask that if there is anything that's bringing anxiety into anyone's life that stands here this morning, you can overcome it. Ask him to do that right now. Ask him in Jesus' name. Ask him. Free me. Free us, Lord. Free us from things that try to plague us. Free our minds and renew our minds, Lord. Let us meditate on what is of you. Father, this morning, if anyone came here today with, without knowing you, without the ability to receive because they're not believing in you, then I simply say, believe in the Lord Jesus. Trust in him with all of your heart. Lean not on your understanding because that will be the, the loud cry. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. If you don't know the Lord and you want to know who he is in a way of submitting yourself to him, being freed from your sins, this is possible today. Lord, if there are the, anyone here that is in that state, Lord, in that place where they need you, just draw them out right now. Just, you're going to have to do something crazy like walk up here so we know who you are. I ask that you take a step in boldness if that's you today. Lord, we expect, we expect, Lord, what might be unexpected. 
we ask that you move in us. Lord, call us up. Call us out. We hear your calling, Lord, and we ask that you use us. We give you our minds. Renew them. We give you our hearts, Lord. Let us be worshipers. Let us serve you. Today, Lord, bring an understanding that overcomes the old and births passion for you and sets us aflame for you, Lord. Father, show us the next step and light the way with your word. Holy Spirit, direct and guide and give us confidence. Give us the understanding. In Jesus' name, amen.